Yes, yes, folks, how you doing? This is Man of Real coming at you uh, with another review. Today we're going to be talking about Joker 2. And yeah, this has absolutely been a fascinating one to observe. Just how sort of audiences and critics have turned on this movie, really. But is it actually as bad, as, as terrible as certain sections of Western society would have you believe? What has this film done to deserve this level of annihilation? Find out after the bit. Let's get real. So yeah, I'm gonna go straight into this really with my thoughts. I went to see this with my friend, big up to Sam, what's good? And I went from having high expectations for, to them considerably dropping, you know, plummeting even. I'm just gonna share my thoughts, that's what I'm gonna do here, you know, uh, and you can sort of make up your own mind based off of that. Starting with the music. The music, in my opinion, uh, serves two purposes in this movie. The first is to give a subject matter and story that would otherwise be thoroughly grim and entertaining hook and entry point entertainment wise kind of like what action sequences do in action movies the part they play so to speak the other more consequential reason is to illustrate in real time the inner workings of arthur flex disturbing yet poetic reality in full delusional grandeur which only serves to add to the aching tragedy of this character the first movie does a near perfect job of putting mental health on blast in the most spectacular and cinematic way possible. While still being authentic and capturing the essence, bottling the essence of this condition and the way it actually deconstructs a human in real time. This film, part two, is altogether bleaker, which is saying something. Number two picks up at the end of the first with Flex still in a detention ward slash prison. There we see the judgery and brutality of his day to day life. It is there where he eventually meets an inmate who he forms a romantic connection with, giving Fleck real hope for perhaps the first time in his entire life. But as we know, hope can often be an extremely dangerous thing. Or at least that's what Morgan Freeman taught us in The Shawshank Redemption. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. From there, Fleck is put on trial for his crimes and the crux of the story then becomes, was Joker really responsible for those heinous tragedies? Or was it in fact the deranged and conniving Fleck all along? In the first film, Fleck is a deranged and lonely guy who's pushed too far. And his breaking point, though extreme, was one that millions of people around the world who saw the film ultimately related to, making him an anti-hero that you could root for, ultimately. This is all done in the vein of a Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver, which the film's framing and aesthetic are definitely paying homage and tribute to. This film, in my opinion, really is a worthy follow-up in both aesthetic, feeling and style. And especially a continued deep dive into a guy suffering a nervous breakdown and the aftermath of said breakdown. The problem, I surmise, might just be that you're not going to necessarily like what you see. A delusional and broken mind, no matter how cinematic, isn't actually a place most people want to spend two plus hours in. Especially sans hope which number one provided. This is not the triumphant fleck of the first film who through everything that he goes through actually emerges like a phoenix via the Joker persona. This film is really a bleak film where a character who's already downtrodden takes more of a beating is what I'm saying. Much has been said about the singing and the dancing and those sequences in general. Here's what I have to say about that. Whether you like them or not, they are literally the visual representation of Arthur Fleck's mind and mental state. And therefore, absolutely necessary to the framing of this story. Those sequences literally are how Fleck sees the world. Like, literally. They are one bit of colour and splash in 
Flex otherwise unbearable world, both for himself as well as us, the audience. For all those reasons, I think they work and I think they work well. You can argue whether there are too many of them and you can argue, you know, within the details of that, but ultimately they work. Still, there's no getting away from the fact that this film is bleaker, which is hardwired into this movie's DNA, no doubt. The ending, as a result, definitely won't have most people or lots of people feeling good about themselves. No sorry, Barb. Which, you know, is quite sad. I think it's possible to not like a film, but for the right reasons. Or for the reasons the creators intended. And for those who didn't like it, Joker 2 is exactly that film in question, really. It isn't intended to be a good time because it's brave and it's being authentic to the subject. And that's what it is. This film may not be as perfect as the first, but I think, in this critic's opinion, it's still great, actually. Or at least close to being great. It's still better than 90% of films you will see in 2024, at least. It is audacious and brave and uncompromising, and therefore made with the same spirit and verve and creativity and bravery as the first film. The feeling though, will definitely not leave you on a high. In that regard, this film is more of a of mice and men than it is a to kill a mockingbird on the literal plane. Both films deal with heavy subject matter, but one uses it to be hopeful, whilst the other dangles hope in front of you like a carrot before yanking it away cruelly. Joker 2 is definitely in the ballpark of Of Mice and Men, full show. Sure. As grim as that book is though, it's still a classic, and the same just might be said when all the dust settles for Joker 2. Not the sequel you wanted, but the sequel Arthur Fleck's story deserved right now keeping it all things Batman. Two harrowing, compelling, tragic thumbs up from me. But what did you think, folks? Do you thoroughly disagree with me? Were you one of the audience members who famously walked out? Did you enjoy it? Do you not want to say? Leave your comments below. If you like it, you like it. You feel what you feel. That's what movies are all about. I, I do not. I fundamentally disagree with the critics on this one and a lot of audience members as well. I think they sort of missed the point. I leave space to be wrong, that said. You know, I've only seen the film once and there's every chance I watch the film again at some point and I go, oh, that's what they were talking about. And hopefully the people who've really disliked it and critics particularly will leave space for the same you know it might just be a great film and i and i came away thinking this is was close to great and i came away thinking as bleak and just and just raw as this film is and i think it was probably too much for people to be honest they just did not want to see two and a bit hours of just a beating a beat down of a character mentally physically you know emotionally but doesn't take away from its greatness or, or it's or it's 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 striving to be great but yeah let me know what you think you can fundamentally disagree with me we'll have a, a verbal punch up that's all good all in all in good faith and all in good spirit uh we love movies here yeah i'll see you on the next one folks love peace afro grease till next time boom